How's it going everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are trying something new. Now I have a few projects that I'm doing and it requires working with uh, dangerous gases and stuff like that. And so I need some sort of way to stop up these flasks and I came across an, a classic King of Random video where he makes proto putty. Now, if you do a lot of home science, you'll probably know what this is. Now, today I want to make some, but not only am I going to make some today, I also want to, I also want to figure out how chemically resistant is it, and how well does it work as an actual rubber stopper. Because if it works very well, this is a very cheap and easy way to make rubber stoppers for your flasks. And so, let's see how it goes. All right, I got my gloves on. I shouldn't need goggles for this, but I do recommend doing this outside because the uh, silicone we're working with uses um, acetic acid to cure and uh, gives off a very strong smell. So I recommend doing it in a well-ventilated area or outside like I'm doing it. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our silicone, make sure it's 100% uh, silicone and it uses acetic acid to cure. And we're gonna open up this bottle. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna take our, um, our food coloring. We're gonna open that up. And I guess we'll use, let's use this color. Kind of resembles rubber stoppers, right? And we're gonna pour this into our plate, just like so. Put a generous amount in there. Okay, and now we can take our silicone. Yep, smells very strongly of vinegar, which makes sense. We're gonna pour a generous amount of this right into our food coloring, just like so. We're not going to need a lot, but I'm going to pour in a decent amount, just like that. And now, we are going to stir it with this stick here, just like so. Okay, to this plate, I'm going to add some of this cornstarch, which should be plenty. And then I will transfer our mixture over to the cornstarch and start mixing it in. So once you start doing this, this is where you really start to um, you, to notice how uh, how it works, right? So I believe we have like f around 15 minutes before this starts to really cure up. So I'm going to keep kneading this together. I'm going to put more cornstarch on it, and we're going to see how it turns out. Okay, here's what the putty looks like after a while. I've been kneading it for a few minutes. Uh, it's actually getting sticky again. Uh, what I've been doing, I've been putting more cornstarch on it whenever it gets sticky. And I've been kneading it through, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to cap those two uh, Erlenmeyer flasks over there. I'm basically going to use this as a type of stopper. Uh, it'll be custom made. And if I really wanted to, I could even poke holes in it, but I don't really... I, I can do that later if I really wanted to. But uh, yeah, so it's going pretty well. Here's what it looks like right now. And uh, pretty soon I'll, I'll be molding it. All right, here we go. Here is the first stopper. I basically just molded it into a ball. I pressed it right into the flask. So now it's a perfect shape for this flask. I'm gonna try to flatten the top a bit, just so that later on, if I wanna put a hole through it, I can. For a glass apparatus. Here's the other one. This For this one, I tried something a little bit different. And I kinda molded it around the top of the flask itself. Hopefully that'll create a seal. And so later when I test this stuff, I want to see A, is it chemically resistant, and B, can it actually hold, um, is it going to be airtight or and or watertight? As you can see here, I actually stuffed a little bit of proto-putty in the top of my uh, homemade anti-backflow uh, piece here that I'm using for a uh, different project. Um, I'll put a link to the video up in that corner if you want to check it out, but I'm also going to see if this will work. I just tested blowing air through it. seems as though air can pass through here, out of that, that side tube side tube there, but it can't go through there. Basically airtight, it seems. So that's uh, pretty cool. Hopefully it'll work and hopefully it'll hold. Eh, well, I was waiting here for those to set. Decided, what the heck, why not try some homemade gunpowder for a little while here. Uh, probably not. There goes a little bit. That looks like charcoal. Well, yeah, charcoal's in it. All right, here we go. Come on. And here we go. There it goes. 
<laughs> All right, round two. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, it's been some time later. Here is the one I made for the smaller flask. It is um, basically this lip for should form a seal. I don't know if it'll be watertight, but I guess we're going to find out. Okay, well, whatever. We're, we're going to try it anyway. I got some water in there. Oh, wow. It's actually holding. Look at that. It's actually holding the water inside. Sweet. Well, so I guess that, all just, that just shows you, even if it's not a perfect seal, it'll still hold pretty well. Nice. Okay, pretty good. Well, if that works, then hopefully this should work. This is a like a standard rubber stopper, basically. Oh, I'll hold in the light so you can see. Uh, basically, I just took this piece, I molded it into the perfect shape, and it should fit directly over the bigger flask. It's like this, just like a standard rubber stopper. So if that worked, then that should definitely work, because it's like a perfect fit, basically. <clears throat> so what I'll do, I'll quickly transfer this water over. It's just water, by the way. It's actually just melted snow. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'll add a little bit more just so that we get a better test. Pour that right in. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to put the stopper in. So then I'm going to push it in just about as far as it can go. All right, perfect. And I'll tip it over. See what happens. And here you go. Works pretty well. It looks like the water isn't even seeping down any further. There's no leaks in it. So there you go. If you want a pretty simple, cheap, and uh, perfect size stopper for your flasks, then this should work very well. Now, the next thing I want to do is... Actually, I want to do two things now. I want to see what happens if you heat it up and what happens if it comes in contact with a strong acid slash a strong base. Um, yeah, so that'll be the next part.